Hello, I'm on the River Slee on the edge of Sleaford in South Lincolnshire and behind me is Cogglesford Water Mill. It gets its name from the cobbled ford just downstream of the mill where the old Roman road, King Street, used to cross the river. The Doomsday Book records 18 water mills on this stretch of the river and this was one of the most important. It was known as the Sheriff's Mill because it was owned by the Bishop of Lincoln and it was a very wealthy and productive mill. It's probably now the last surviving sheriff's mill in the whole of England. For over 800 years, this mill prospered until finally more efficient forms of milling made the vagaries of water milling redundant. And for a hundred years, the mill lay derelict until 1990, when North Kesteven took on and restored the mill and it burst back into life. This is the present mill house and behind me, you can see the old miller's cottages. It was originally built as a single story, but the upper story was added as a kind of grain floor. And that is also where the stones are. The water wheel is on the ground floor and that's what we're going to see now. I'm Malcolm Phillips. I'm a volunteer here at Cobblesford Mill. We have two sets of milling stones here. One set, which is Derbyshire grit stone, which we use for wholemeal flour. And the other set is a French burr stones, which we use for producing the white flour. French burr stones produce a much larger pieces of bran. And we use that in order to uh, go through a bolter where it separates the bran from the white flour. We have two sets of stones at this mill. We have to select which one we're going to use, which set we're going to use. And I'm about to put the stone nut into the spear wheel so that we drive this set of stones. Having got the mill started, we then adjust the tendering screw and this adjusts the distance between the stones and adjust it to get the right fineness of the flower. The grain having come up on the sack hoist then gets taken across to the hoppers that feed the stones and is emptied in here. The flour that comes from the French burr stones, which is wholemeal, is then fed into a machine called the bolter and from there it separates the bran from the white flour. The mill is open every day in the summer and weekends in the winter. You can buy flour and souvenirs and gifts in our shop. Uh, we mill our own flour every second Sunday of the month. You can also find out about our event days on our website at cogglesfordwatermill.co.uk. Hi, we're Winter Wilson. I'm Kip Winter. This is Dave Wilson. This song is called A Miller's Life. It was inspired by the writings of David Smith who was brought up in Westgate Mill, just along the river sleeve from where we stand now. Oh 
that Sleaford navigation was seen as a way to bring prosperity to this growing market town. There were two failed attempts before a meeting in October 1791, attended by local businessmen and prominent backers, including Benjamin Hanley and the famous botanist and explorer, Sir Joseph Banks. They devised a scheme involving the canal builder, William Jessop. He was one of the great canal builders that built the canal network right across Britain. Another was James Brindley and Jessop's own pupil, Thomas Telford. Banks persuaded Jessop to come here and look at the Slee. And he saw a much better way of making a new navigation, building locks all the way from here down to the junction with the River Witham. Parliament approved the scheme and in May 1794, the first barges came up the navigation. It is known as a navigation because it follows and sometimes merges with an existing river system, whereas a canal is usually an artificially cut channel which may run completely independently of any existing river drainage system. There was even a separate proposal to build a link between the Sleaford navigation and the Grantham Canal, providing much quicker access from the Midlands to the North Sea via the port of Boston. You can see from the size of these locks that even the largest barges could come up the navigation. Some of the principal imports that they brought were coal, salt, oil seeds, cider, wine, and perry. The principal exports included grain and agricultural products. In 1822, this mill pond was enlarged to accommodate all the barge traffic that was coming in from the industrial Midlands. And between about 1795 and 1857, this navigation would have been full of the bustle and shouting of the barge men and women manoeuvring the barges through these locks and on up to the main basin near Money's Mill. There are some beautiful, quiet places along the Sleaford navigation, especially here at Haverhome Bridge. And just over here are the ruins of Haverhome Priory where a young Dennis Finch Hatton grew up. Much later, he became the lover of Karen Blixen in the film Out of Africa. Further down, the navigation passes the ruins of Kaim Castle Keep. Unfortunately for the navigation, the railways arrived in Sleaford in 1857 and waterborne commerce rapidly declined. The navigation company was wound up and by 1890, most of the navigation was closed for commercial traffic. But barges continued to use the locks near the River Witham Junction till about 1950. This is Haverhome Lock. And today, the Sleaford navigation is only open in the lower reaches where the Sleaford Navigation Trust have repaired bottom lock. Perhaps one day, these locks will all be repaired and pleasure craft and perhaps even barges will again move up and down the navigation system, linking Sleaford with the National Canal and River Network as it was in the old days. Now, take a 10 minute walk up the navigation bank to see the Navigation House exhibition and learn all about how the Sleaford Navigation Company operated. This is Navigation House Visitor Centre. This is the building where Sleaford Navigation was managed and maintained. And today, it's a wonderful exhibition about that management. And it tells you all about how the canal was built and maintained. This is thought to be the only purpose-built navigation house in rural Britain. Above the front entrance is the crest designed by Sir Joseph Banks. It features a miner, symbolic of the coal imports, and a farmer, who signifies the agricultural exports that went the other way. Navigation House was built as the Canal Company office, and the purpose of the building was to weigh the cargo that travelled along the navigation and charge a tollage based on the weight of that. 
Um, so as well as housing the weighing machine, it was always also home to the navigation clerk, the company clerk, and he would live upstairs and work downstairs. And um, for that purpose, actually, it's a really grand building because most towns would just have a shed to house the weighing machine and any business would be conducted from a solicitor's office. But they, it was a really prosperous town at the time. So they built quite a statement building. So it's quite impressive for the job that it does. Hey, Roger. Oh, thank hey. you, Dawn. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. A water mill is a combination of the tranquility of the turning water wheel and the humming industry of the stones. Lincolnshire's most famous poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson, put it so well in his poem, The Miller's Daughter. The meal sacks on the whitened floor, the dark round of the dripping wheel, the very air around the door made misty with the floating meal. Come down to Cobblesford and see for yourself. With the crashing and the rumble, I heard him father's song. It's a miller's life, a miller's life only. It's a miller's life, a miller's life only. 